Hey, it's Colin Shope, host of WCBU's On Deck. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, then please help support it financially. Give now during Spring Fund Drive at wcbu.org slash donate. The Peoria Park District is making progress on a replacement for the July 3rd fireworks. That's just one of the things you'll want to hear about to start your day for Tuesday, April 9th. I'm Colin Shope, and this is WCBU's On Deck. First on deck today, Peoria wasn't in the path of totality of yesterday's solar eclipse, but that didn't stop many from taking the time out to view the rare astronomical event. WCBU's Isabella Nieto reports. The April 8th eclipse was the first total solar eclipse viewable from the continental U.S. since 2017. Peoria resident Diane Rock watched that last eclipse at the Peoria Riverfront Museum and returned to the spot for yesterday's eclipse. She says her experience last time was amazing and worth coming back for. I just think it's a unique thing for everybody to come together and celebrate, and it's a a once-in-a-lifetime for lots of people, so it's worth coming out and paying attention to it. Rock isn't the only one making a return to the museum for an eclipse. Sylvia Renthrop says an eclipse is a personal event for her and her family. She says it is a tradition for her and her family to go out and experience events like the eclipse. It's a historic event. And it's, you know, it's for you to pass on to your family, grandkids, and if anything occurred or, you know, coming this way toward the earth, you know, you'll be here to witness this. Peoria Riverfront Museum educators provided information and DIY pinhole viewers for viewing party guests to safely view the eclipse. The next total solar eclipse in the continental U.S. will occur in August of 2045. For WCBU's On Deck, I'm Isabella Nieto. Here are some other stories we're following in the WCBU newsroom. The head of Peoria's Salvation Army says plans for the downtown Labor Temple property the organization acquired are still in an early exploratory phase. And Parker Palooza is coming back for round two this June on Peoria's riverfront, but a lot is changing. Plus, there's a statewide advisory board that meets four times a year to figure out ways to address Illinois' opioid crisis. Find more of these stories and all the details at WCBU. The Peoria Park District is making progress on replacing this year's canceled July 3rd fireworks in Glen Oak Park. The decision followed public statements from Peoria law enforcement and community members concerned with safety and police staffing during the busy week of July 4th. Following a vote at their regular meeting on March 13th, the park board left staff with a directive. Take the $30,000 budgeted for the event and find a way to still honor the tradition of July 3rd. We had had a couple of meetings where we quite honestly went in circles a little bit, right? It's like, what do you do? What kind of an event should it be that is? part of what the fireworks was, but it didn't end in fireworks. That's Park District Executive Director Emily Cahill. At a programming committee meeting last week, Cahill, board trustees Joyce Herrant and Steve Montez, and a group of staff leadership hammered out a tentative plan for two events to replace July 3rd. Cahill says it starts with determining the target audience for these events. First, a substitute on July 3rd. We're going to look at an event that is earlier in the day, Uh, when it's cooler and you can get people in and and to participate and to think about really supporting local summer camps and schools with an event that is from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. The event could include inflatables, local entertainers, food, and reduced or free admission to the Peoria Zoo and Peoria Playhouse. A number of factors, including lack of additional security as the sun goes down, went into planning this event, but Cahill says this shouldn't reflect on Glen Oak Park's general safety. It's really about resource allocation. It's about unique experiences for our community, and it's about making sure that we are doing things that are unique and positive and that are engaging to the community. Staff estimated the cost of this event at around $8,000, with a few thousand more dedicated to a marketing campaign, making clear to the public that it won't end with fireworks this year. 
The remaining budget is being utilized for a 130th birthday celebration for Glen Oak Park. The committee settled on a broader audience here, late middle school and high school aged kids, as well as neighborhood families. This event will be later in the day, approximately noon to 7 p.m., and happen on a yet-to-be-determined fall weekend, likely in September. Trustee Joyce Herent is the chair of the programming committee. My goal is to um, engage the community uh, as much as I can in helping us say, well, what would make, what, what would, what do you want to see as part of that celebration? Some ideas out of the many potential ones proposed for the Glen Oak birthday celebration include a performance from the municipal band, food from local vendors, and various opportunities to represent the businesses on the East Bluff. Trustee and Programming Committee member Steve Montez says it's crucial to design an event that recognizes and honors the importance of the park and neighborhood. When we remove a, an event for whatever reasons, that we have to make sure that we leave something in its place. And so I think that's my concern is that the East Bluff has reason to uh, come together as a group and celebrate. Both Montez and Herent say they would like to ideally see the fireworks return, but Herent acknowledges the argument for a pause. The recognition, I think for me in the end, is that we need that breather, we need that big change and have something successful in the fall and then we can come back and, and, and start and, and, and we will be planning then for July 3rd in 2025. And Cahill agrees. She says there were signs in previous years that the July 3rd fireworks could use some reworking. We have seen a decline in participation at the 3rd of July. Uh, we've seen a, you know, a change in attitudes about that event as, as certainly seen in the wide variety of comments made by the community tied to that event. Um, there's always opportunity for us to get better. What form that improvement will take remains to be seen. The Park Board is expected to get some of the rough details of the new events at their regular meeting this Wednesday. Cahill says there will be more details for the board as the programming committee's minutes are finalized and the staff make progress on planning later this month. In the place of the July 3rd fireworks, these two early sketches of new events aimed at celebrating everything unique about Glen Oak Park and the community that surrounds it. Now, before we let you go, tonight is the annual town meeting and town board meeting for the township of Peoria. That starts at 6 p.m. in the Peoria City Council Chambers at City Hall. And that's all for today. You can subscribe to WCBU's On Deck podcast on the NPR app, Apple, or Spotify.